Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Christina. I made this channel for viewers like you to show that wine making can be fun, safe, and enjoyable, whether you're a beginner or an expert. So before we begin, I'm gonna pour myself a glass of peach tea wine that I have bottled. As you can see, she's lovely, she's clear, she's awesome. I picked up some really cool stickers that are vintage. I love this one, it's so funny. It says, I drink coffee because I need it and wine because I deserve it. And because I made this bottle of wine, I definitely deserve to have a glass while we talk about our recipe. Today, we're gonna to be using some canned sweet potatoes for our recipe. I'm super excited to try it. I don't know how it's gonna taste or what's gonna happen. This is kind of an experiment for me and I'll explain why in just a second. I hope that you would go ahead and hit the subscribe button and follow along uh, through my journey with this wine because I really don't know how it's gonna come out. I've not seen anybody do canned sweet potatoes and make a wine out of it. I'm not really sure why. I tried to go down the rabbit hole, find a reason. I don't have time to cut up six pounds of sweet potatoes, boil them, take out the sweet potatoes just to use the juices to make a wine. So my question and my curiosity was, why can't we use canned sweet potatoes? And if you look around the internet, especially YouTube, there's nobody doing canned sweet potatoes. So I thought this would be a really good way for me to try my own recipe and see what the outcome is. So if you like that type of idea, you wanna see what goes on with this experiment, if it works, if it doesn't, if it's amazing, if it's not, please hit the subscribe button, like button, stick around. It'll be in a separate playlist, so you'll be able to come up on it. You'll be able to see more videos I've made as well. The list of the recipe that I'm gonna be using, I will go ahead and present it to you guys now. And you guys can just go ahead, take a screenshot so you have the whole recipe. I took the sweet potatoes, poured them into the brew bag. And when I did that, um, I took all the juice away from them and put it into the bucket. And I, go, I went ahead and weighed the sweet potatoes without sweet potato juice in it and without the juice total. And the bowl was around one pound, nine ounces. So when I subtracted that, we still didn't have enough because this recipe is gonna call for at least five pounds of potatoes. So I pulled out one more pound of uh, canned potatoes that I had. And when I got rid of the juices of that as well and reweighed it and did the math, it was five pounds, nine ounces, so that is perfect. I will be adding one pound of raisins, which I weighed out, and we are going to be using one pound of brown sugar, zest of two oranges, and two cinnamon sticks. Three pounds of honey. The reason why I'm going to keep the potato, sweet potato juice is because it does have added sugars in it. Um, so we already have that going. I'm gonna go ahead and use my three pounds of honey. Oh my goodness. And I have everything disinfected that we're gonna be needing. Even my table was disinfected before I started doing all this. But I'm just gonna get all that honey into the bucket. I know like some people might say, well, this is technically like a mead, right? Cause you're using honey. Um, I would not consider this a mead unless somebody can give me a scientific reasoning or a uh, definition of what this would be because we're adding brown sugar as well. So I don't know what you call that when you're adding sugar and honey. This is kind of like my first time using honey. So I'm really excited to see what this wine is gonna taste like, but the reason why I want to use honey is because I want a very buttery, sweet potato flavor. I want it to taste like that sweet potato casserole that you get on Thanksgiving. Now, yes, of course, <laughs> we have passed Thanksgiving, but sweet potatoes are on sale right now. And that's why I went ahead and bought those cans because it's all about doing things on a budget over here. I'm gonna go ahead and add my brown sugar. And by the way, the scale that I got uh, that you see in the video, I paid 
one dollar at a thrift store for that. How freaking amazing is that to find a kitchen scale for only a dollar? I mean, I was like, yes, getting it now. Sorry, you're not taking it. It's mine. It's going home. Another man's trash is another man's treasure. Now that I've added the honey and I've added the brown sugar, I'm going to go ahead and stir everything up. Because this is very thick, as you can see with the honey. Whoops, I splashed it everywhere. I'm such a messy person. I don't, I don't know how to not make a mess. That's just who I am. So I'm going to quickly stir this. Oh, looks like I'm making egg whites because I uh, whipped it so darn hard. Next thing I'm going to be putting in here is one and a half teaspoons of acid blend. I am also going to add one teaspoon of yeast nutrient. And now I'm going to just mix those together. Next thing we're going to need is one Canton tablet crushed. And there it is, one Canton tablet crushed going in. Just stir that in. I have another handy dandy spoon here. Disinfected. Next, we're going to do oranges. The zest of two oranges and two cinnamon sticks. Alrighty, so here's the zest of my two oranges right here. I'm going to add this into my brew bag. Mmm, smells good. And I don't want to waste any of that. I'm going to make sure I get as much zest peel as I can. And we have here two cinnamon sticks, which one is falling apart. That's another reason why I did not add any wine tannin to this recipe is because the cinnamon sticks are going to act as our wine tannin. And then we're going to add one pound of raisins. Here's my raisins. I've seen people use golden raisins, whatever. I'm just using what the hell I have in my pantry. And that is just some regular damn raisins. So that's everything that's going to go inside the brew bag. And what we want to do is tie it because we don't want anything to come out of the bag. We just want everything to stay inside there. We can kind of sit in here and judge like, okay, so like I'm going to need this much water, you know, have an idea. That's what I like to do is take it and put it in here to see how much more water I'm going to need. So let me get some water. Do you insist on keep pushing me away? Let's go ahead and add this water. How much peptic enzyme do we need for tomorrow? One teaspoon. So because this is a one gallon kit, I always wait 24 hours, let everything sit, settle, marinate, whatever you want to call it. And then we would add our peptic enzyme. And then when you add the peptic enzyme, we'll sprinkle that in, stir it in real good, because peptic enzyme is what helps clarify everything. Then we're gonna ha add our yeast in there. Then we're gonna close the lid up, add the airlock, and let shit happen. As I humbly love to say, just let it be. That's the best part about wine, is to just let it go, let it do its own thing, and see what happens, you know what I mean? It's not like a progress where you have to constantly do this, constantly do that. All right, let's take a specific gravity reading. So the reason why we want to take specific gravities of the wine that we're making is so we have an idea of what it should turn out to be. In that way, when we go to check on our wine, so like a few weeks after it's like not profusively fermenting as much, 
and we can check with our hydrometer if uh, our substance has went ahead and finished all the way through or if it had stalled out, something like that. Now this hydrometer is reading about 19%. I did make this recipe a very high volume of sugar. I did this on purpose because I'm going to be using the Lalvin 118C. It's a very, very strong yeast. And with that yeast, it can make alcohol up to 18%. Um, this is reading about 19%, so maybe we'll have some sugar left over that will keep it sweet in the end. So maybe it's not gonna run completely dry. I'm praying this is not gonna stall out. I don't think it will because the yeast that I'm using is very, very aggressive. It does the job. That's why I always recommend it to my subscribers to use Lalvin 118C because it just does a fantastic job. Um, so this, I believe, it's probably gonna get us, as long as everything doesn't stall out, 17%, 18%. 16% somewhere around there and then if there's leftover sugars then I mean that's fine that's okay we're just going to have a nice sweet wine but it's still going to be really high of volume and alcohol so we're just going to have to have our fingers crossed that everything works out fine I'm just going to go ahead put this stuff back in the bucket because it was disinfected and I don't need the spoon in here unless I want to do one more promising stir. And if you see um, another thing I want to recommend, because I put the raisins uh, at the top of the bag, you see here, I kind of flipped it over and let the potatoes be at the top because they're already kind of like soaking wet uh, because they were in cans. And if you let those raisins on top and they're really not getting... A lot of moisture they can kind of maybe collect mold which we definitely do not want i may or may not be probably one of the world's messiest winemakers <laughs> i don't know why like i try to contain everything but i always seem to make the biggest messes look i have honey on the lid how did how did the honey get there like i just i'm messy i'm a messy person and that's one thing I'm going to tell you when you're making wine. Make sure you have a spray bottle with some maybe Dawn dish soap in it or whatever and a rag so you can clean up after yourself because shit gets sticky real quick. Just saying. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on the bucket and I'm going to fill up my airlock, put it on top, even though nothing's going to be fermenting overnight. We still don't want to get any nasty little fruit flies or anything inside our bucket uh, to torment our freshly made brew. Okay, it's on. I'm gonna take my water here that is clean. Oh, I got hair everywhere. I'm a shudder, I don't know why. Does anybody out there shed hair like I do? I don't know. All right, you're gonna fill this up with water, put the lid on, put it on top. I got this bucket from Homebrew Ohio. I did a whole review on them. I will leave a, a link in the description down below. Uh, I will also link the review that I did for the one gallon wine kit because that's what this had come from. Um, so if you're interested in getting your own one gallon wine kit, I do have a couple options available to you. Always just check down in my playlist and you can find it right there, all my reviews that I've done. So tomorrow what we're gonna do is we'll add our teaspoon of peptic enzyme. I will make sure to film that for you guys. You just kind of sprinkle it in, stir it in very well, and then we'll add the Lalvin 118C. So I will see you all tomorrow. Cheers! Next day, now we're adding a teaspoon of the peptic enzyme. Make sure you stir that in well. Add your packet of yeast. Make sure it's nice and moist with a spoon so it lives in the house that it's gonna live in nice and well. Thank you all for sticking around this far. I loved having you watch my video. And as always, happy fermenting.